on Linux if you wanted good open source GPU drivers for a discrete GPU, you had one option for a really long time. That being AMD. Then, Intel released their discrete GPUs. Then you had two options. The problem is those GPUs are mostly not that great, but the drivers were good because they already had good drivers for the ones in their CPU die, but they're still good. So that's two out of three. Then NVIDIA is basically just left by the wayside doing whatever it is that NVIDIA does. If you wanted a good experience on NVIDIA, you had to use the proprietary blobs. This is stupid, but there is another option that has been around for a very long time. That being Nuvo or Novo, however you want to say it. This is licensed under the MIT license and is developed as part of the Xorg Foundation. And on old NVIDIA GPUs, it works. Now, I'm not going to say works well, but you get a display output and it mostly works. On newer cards, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work because of some signed firmware, so it kind of actively hampers the GPU experience, so it's not exactly recommended. But the project has not been abandoned, and there has been a lot of work as of late to get it actually working well on modern NVIDIA GPUs, because it's all well and good if it's great for legacy cards, but most people aren't buying legacy cards. Eventually, the current cards that don't work are going to be the legacy cards, so you kind of want to get the current cards working now, so that when they become the legacy cards, then the people that are still using them still have something that works. So, as such, there has been this stuff with the GSP firmware. Without this firmware on modern NVIDIA GPUs, you can't do basic things like reclocking and power management. So, it just runs at whatever the GPU feels like it wants to default at, which is not the best of ways to run a GPU. Now, that's no longer going to be an issue. This takes modern NVIDIA GPUs from being a pipe dream in the project to actually being possible, not viable, but possible. But there's more work to get it to be viable. Linux gaming revolves around two main drawing APIs, Vulkan, and to a lesser extent, but a lot more common with the older titles, OpenGL. Now, Vulkan is a big deal because we have this thing called DXVK, DirectX to Vulkan, converting the Windows DirectX calls into Vulkan calls that work cross-platform, cross-platform including Linux. And last year we saw the beginnings of NVK, NVIDIA Vulkan, an open source Vulkan driver for NVIDIA. Now, the proprietary blobs do have Vulkan support and you can game just fine on an NVIDIA GPU on Linux, but this is an open source driver, this is new. Now, at this point in 2022, we were talking hyper experimental. This was not production ready. This was barely even like drawing graphics ready, but the idea was there and it was being worked on. And this came along way quicker than I would have ever expected. For example, it was working a year ago playing Talos Principle at not zero. Not one, not two, five FPS. That might not sound impressive, but the fact that it can do even five at that point was wild. And then five months ago, we saw this demo. Now, there's no information on the screen about how fast it is running, but clearly Hollow Knight is running a lot more than five... Okay, the person playing is not very good, but clearly it's running above five FPS. It's playable. Like, this is a playable frame rate. That's a lot more than we were at before. Granted, it's a 2D game and it'll run it on a potato, but it is something. Now, the next big thing we saw is NVK reaches Vulkan 1.0 conformance. Now, 1.0 is not the latest version of Vulkan, but the fact that it's passing all of the 1.0 tests is wild. Remember, just a year before this, it was barely playing a game at 5 FPS. 
now it is actually finishing the Vulcan test suite. Practically, it means we can pass the entire Vulcan conformance test suite. From the Kronos perspective, it means that NVK now meets the bar required to claim to support the Vulcan API officially. There are some legal implications of this which matter to the Mesa project, but most users don't care about them. From the perspective of users, it means the driver should pretty much work on Turing and later GPUs. There will still be bugs, of course, but those bugs are likely to be app-specific. Most stuff should just work. Now, it should be noted the focus of NVK and the focus of Nuvo now are very new GPUs. Turing is the 20 series or later. 16 series included because... NVIDIA doing weird releases. Anything before that? Yeah, they're kind of just leaving it alone. This is what I mean by eventually the current GPUs are going to become legacy. NVK is still labeled experimental within Mesa, but the future is looking bright. Honestly, the present is looking pretty blinding already. There is this channel over on Peertube called Linux vs Windows Benchmarks by Cosmic Happiness. This includes a bunch of demos for NVK comparing with the Windows drivers, comparing with proprietary, all of this fun stuff. And it's playing games well now. This is a 4090M, a 7945HX at 1440p max settings. And whilst it is not running well, like super well. It's running about 30 FPS and dropping a bit. This is max settings. If you lower it down and bring down the resolution, you could easily clear six... Why is the instance doing this? You could easily clear like 60 or 70 FPS. No problem. Here is another example for Tales of Arise. Once again, it's not playing perfectly by any means. You're getting frame drops and all that, but like you're getting a playable frame rate, which could not have been set a couple of months ago. And you may have seen this post from Pierre-Lou Griffiths of Valve, how long until NVK runs a recent game faster than proprietary? Probably a matter of weeks than months at this point. Faith Ekstrand, one of the people working this project said, given that I'm about to go on holiday, I don't know that weeks is a wise bet, However, it's probably not long. Some stuff is already doing fairly well depending on your GPU. 60 to 90 FPS gaming is definitely possible today. W work weeks then. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. But he also went and did a test himself. Decided to try it. Had in time 1080p, very high VSync off. NVK Vulcan Novo Git, this version here, on kernel 6.7 rc5-1 mainline blob is 545.29.06 3995 wx plus rtx 3090 proton experimental nvk 210 fps blob 165 fps the game is cpu bound but still now this is hard to say exactly if this or this is better you might think high number better person but if this one is stuttering a lot you would definitely prefer this. But just pure amount of frames being able to be pumped out. The fact that it can get higher, and it's not done yet. Like, think of the bright future this has. Now, if somehow you're not already impressed, let me just go over a bit of history. Do you guys remember five years ago when Proton first got announced? There was a post that looked a little something like this. And this was the entire game list we had. Very important that uh, Nier is on here, because this is the reason why DXVK was made. But this was all of the games that Proton supported. Back then, I was a Windows gamer, and I thought, okay, this is actually kind of cool. I wasn't going to use Linux at the time, but I thought it was neat that this Linux thing was, like, getting some support. And now, compare it to where we are today... Today, not only do we have a lot of games working, but a lot of games are working a lot of well. The main ones that are broken are weird anti-cheat games and weird DRM systems that are non-standard systems, but most other things, at a bare minimum, play. And very likely, 
play incredibly well. Going back to NVK, we are here right now. We are at the point where it works, but nobody knows how many things it works for and how much work still needs to be done, but you can actually go and use it and have a good experience in certain cases. Now, you do need a fairly new NVIDIA GPU, but eventually, as I said, those new NVIDIA GPUs are going to be the old NVIDIA GPUs, and then the newer, newer NVIDIA GPUs are going to be an even better experience. But every single person involved, whether it be Faith Extran, Dave Ailey, Carol Herbs, Ben Skeggs, or all of the other people that I failed to mention, all of these people are doing great work, and give it a year, give it two years, give it three, give it five years, when we get to the point where it's had as much development as Proton has had, I think we're legitimately going to be at the point where if you buy an NVIDIA GPU and you want to run it on Linux, you can just game with the open drivers and there's no thought that needs to be put into it. Plus, then you get the benefit of CUDA as well. If you eventually need to do some of that work, you can swap over to the proprietary drivers and have that there as an option as well. I might buy an NVIDIA GPU at some point. I'm not going to buy one as my next one, but maybe the card after that. We'll have to wait and see where this whole project is at. So let me know your thoughts down below. Have you messed around with the current state of NVK? Do you think it is good for gaming? Do you think that it would be nice if they sported a couple of older cards? Or do you think it's probably a good idea to just leave them as they are and then go forward with the newer stuff? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scribes of Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and maybe <laughs> imagine Novo becomes a perfect experience on Wayland before the proprietary drivers. That would be something.